Noticing what's going on in your mind. Any thoughts going on there that you don't need during our time here together? Maybe you're thinking about a conversation you had. Maybe there's been some sort of um, uncomfortable thoughts or feelings going on. Maybe it's just thinking about the future. Whatever it may be, see if you can place it to the side for now. Not pushing it away. And after class, you can always decide if you want to go back to it or not. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, we started on chakras. Uh, since we missed last week, this week is our second chakra, which is our sacral chakra. So again, our chakras are the energy centers throughout our body. We have seven major ones. Um, whether or not you uh, completely believe that we have chakras in our body, each chakra still deals with things that we all go through in our lives. So that's what we focus on in class. Our second chakra, the sixth chakra, is in the lower abdomen and the low back. The color associated with it is orange and the element is water. It deals with creativity, sexuality, money, relationships, empathy, nurturing, pleasure, emotions, movement, change, warmth, and intimacy. It represents your ability to go with the flow, grace and acceptance, and allowing yourself to enjoy your life and achievements. All right, so let's take a few more rounds of breath here. And then making some small movements in your fingers and toes. Maybe those small movements become bigger movements. And whenever you feel ready, rolling over to one side, whichever side is calling for you. And then gently making your way up to seated. Uh, sorry, seated and then right into tabletop. All right, so from tabletop, we're going to find some organic movement here. So making some circles maybe with the hips uh, or maybe any other movements that feels good for you. See if you can make some fluid, fluid movements. found a squeaky spot in the floor. <laughs> All right, so a couple more rounds here or movements, whatever feels right for you in your body. And then we'll come back to our tabletop. So just a reminder in the tabletop to grip your fingers into the, uh, into the earth and cup your hands. Imagine there's a little ladybug underneath your hands and you don't wanna squish the ladybug. Okay, and we're gonna find a little bit of movement in the hips here. So let's bring the um, left foot up and back behind you, knees bent. And then we're gonna make circles here in the hip with the knees. So bringing that knee up 
uh, towards, say, the front of the mat or towards your uh, left arm. <laughs> Let's try this again. Foot comes up, we're gonna make a circle. Draw a circle, knee comes out and around towards that left arm and then leg comes back again. Right, that makes more sense. <laughs> So just continue making big circles here. So the circles are in the knee, but really it's the hip that's making the movement. And then if it feels good, go the opposite direction in the circles. Hard to figure that one out in my brain, but that's okay. All right, so one more. And then gently lowering um, the left knee back down to the earth. We'll come over to the right side. So right foot comes up, knee is bent, and then drawing that circle around and towards the front and then back again. And then maybe going in the opposite direction as well. So kind of with our uh, some of our shapes that we make today, we're separating the different parts of our pelvis. So we're working on one side and then the other side. All right, coming back to tabletop. We'll give our hands a little break here. So making your way back into a child's pose. Any variation that feels good for you here. And if your head doesn't come all the way to the earth, maybe grabbing a block, a folded blanket, or placing stacked fists underneath your forehead. So taking deep inhales and long, slow exhale. Sometimes we feel blocked in our creativity or in our relationships. Often that can be because we don't feel like we are enough. Let go of the feeling that you are not enough. Let go of feeling like what you do isn't enough. Let go of feeling like what you have isn't enough. And let go of feeling like what and who you are isn't enough. All right. Gently making your way back into a tabletop pose. And then whenever you're ready, curling your toes back or under, <laughs> sending your hips back and up behind you, downward dog. Shoulders roll back and down the spine. Maybe you keep a deep bend in your knees to begin. Maybe you walk out your dog. Find your breath, taking deep inhales in through your nose and long, slow exhales out. If you need to, let go. So we're going to take two more rounds of breath here. And then we're going to allow the right foot to come up towards the sky, bending the right knee. And remember those circles you made uh, in tabletop, we're making the same circles. You can stay back in your downward dog if you want while making this motion. Or if you want to challenge yourself a little bit, you can always shift your weight forward into a plank pose as you bring your knee forward and then come back into three-legged dog. So you can make this as challenging as you want. Maybe it's enough just to be in a three-legged dog. All right, let's come back three-legged dog, right foot up towards the sky, shifting your weight forward, sending your right foot 
through between your hands and then lowering the back knee down towards the earth. All right, so we'll find a low lunge here just for a few rounds of breath. So right knee is over the ankle and in line with the second or third toe. Crown of your head reaches forward, draw the navel in. And we want to try and not put too much uh, weight into our hands. Feel free to grab blocks if the earth feels like it's too far away from you. Soften the shoulders. Sink and settle that left leg down, left thigh. One more round of breath here. And then let's bring the hands up to the right thigh. Push into the thigh to lift your upper body. Find a slight tuck here of the tailbone. Maybe you sink and settle a little bit more. Maybe you find a little more length between the legs. Feeling a stretch here along the front of the left thigh. Hold for a couple more rounds of breath. All right, I'm gonna give you a choice. You can keep the knee down or you can curl the back toes under, lift the back knee, squeeze the inner thighs, lift the upper body. We'll all lift the arms up towards the sky. If you're up in a high lunge, check your front knee once again, that it's over the ankle in line with the second or third toe. Softening the shoulders, squeeze the inner thighs. Now, if, you don't wanna be in a low lunge and you don't wanna be in a high lunge. You always have the option to come into a warrior one. Instead, left foot comes down to the earth, toes point up towards the top left corner of the mat, squaring the hips towards the front of the room. What am I gonna do when I'm no longer teaching in this room? Um, there's this wall beside me. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna fall over. All right, so a few more rounds of breath here. Here's a little tip. If you are having problems with balance, find a wider stance, right foot to the right side, left foot to the left. There, that's better. <laughs> All right, we're not done here. We're gonna find a twist. Uh, let's bring the arms out towards the sides and turning towards the right side. Reach the arms long. Find your breath, find your balance. Longer holds can be a little more challenging. All right, and then on your next inhale, arms come back to center. Exhale, let's all bring the hands down towards the earth and come into a tabletop pose back into your child's pose. Ooh, feel that along the front of the left hip. So deep inhales and long, slow exhales. I am enough. I am enough. All right, let's make our way back into our tabletop pose. Back into your three-legged dog. All right, so left leg reaches up towards the sky. So bending the knee and then finding those circles here on the left side. 
Again, you have the option to shift your weight forward, knee towards the elbow if you want to make it a little bit more challenging. <laughs> Maybe you're like me and you're getting clicks. <laughs> it's totally okay. All right, one more circle. Three-legged dog. Stepping the left foot through, lowering the right knee. All right, now let's find our low lunge. So again, we wanna draw the navel in here. Crown of the head reaches forward. We don't wanna put a lot of pressure in on the hands. So there's a little bit more of an active uh, low lunge, instead of just kind of sinking into it and settling. Again, if you need to make adjustments to feel a little more or maybe a little less, <laughs> feel free to do so. I am enough. Allowing your hands to come to your left thigh, push into the thigh to help you rise. Maybe you sink a little further. Something about pushing into the thigh that really makes it more obvious along the front of the right uh, thigh and right hip. Oh. <laughs> All right, so entirely your choice. You can stay here or curl the back toes under, lift the back knee, squeeze the inner thighs to rise. We'll all bring the arms up towards the sky. Softening the shoulders. And notice what's going on with your hips. See if you can kind of square the hips towards the front of the mat. <laughs> Let's find our twist. Arms come out to the side. Turn towards the left side. Reach the arms nice and long, nice tall spine. Two more rounds of breath. Two, come back to center. And then hands come down to the earth. Drop the back knee if it's up. We'll come into tabletop and into child's pose. So notice what you feel here along the right side. What I do is enough. What I do is enough. All right, coming back into your tabletop. And then we're gonna come down onto the floor. So shifting your weight forward, tuck the elbows and slowly lower to the earth. Right, tops of the feet here. So let's, let's start by doing this. Um, picking up the right leg, point the toes, stretch the right leg away and then place the right foot on the earth. Doing the same thing with the left, reach the toes, reach the leg away, place it on the earth. So tops of the feet are gonna push down towards the earth. Now, sometimes it feels more comfortable to turn the toes in and the heels out. Uh, more comfortable for the low back. So you play around with it and see what feels best for you when you come up. So we'll start baby cobra here, hands underneath the shoulders, lift the heart, look down at the earth, tuck the elbows in by the sides. 
So feet straight, about hip distance, maybe wider, or maybe does it feel better toes together, heels apart. All right, so maybe you stay here in your baby cobra. Maybe you lift your hands up off the earth, find um, all the work in your low back or in your back. Maybe you stay here or maybe you reach the arms forward by the ear, shoulders roll back and down the spine, push the tops of the feet down. Reach nice and long, both the arms and the legs. And then gently lower to the earth. Uh, maybe placing your hands underneath your head, bending your knees and windshield wipering your feet from side to side. What I have is enough. All right, dropping the feet back down towards the earth. And we'll come back into our tabletop pose. So if you have blocks, uh, feel free to grab them, place one on each side of your mat near the top of the mat. We're gonna step the right foot forward. And the blocks, excuse me, the blocks are to bring the earth up closer to you if it's hard to reach the floor. So we're gonna walk ourselves back here, extending the right leg, activate the right leg. Uh, roll the right hip back, left hip forward. I said activate the right leg, right foot. <laughs> so if you don't feel much of a stretch here, find length in the spine and then hinge from the hips folding towards the right leg. Keep that right foot active. So maybe you stay here or I'll give you an option here for a twist. Left hand comes down to either the block or the earth. Right arm reaches up towards the sky. Roll the right hip back. All right, if you're in that twist, gently lowering the right hand back down. Two more rounds of breath here. And then slowly walking the blocks forward once again. Think and settle here a little bit. All right, so an option here for you, depending on what feels good for you in your body. So maybe you stay here, hands on the blocks or the earth, maybe hands come to your thigh, right thigh. All right, if it's in your body, lost my block, <laughs> um, curling the toes of the left foot under that back foot. You may have to shift your weight forward slightly, hands come forward to pick up the back foot and then reach the left foot back. Left foot is active. And then if you can come back up, right hand to right thigh. If not, right hand can come to the block or maybe it's on the earth. So keeping that left foot active, if this doesn't feel good for you in your body, just find a low lunge. Or maybe it's just curling the toes under the back foot, that still gives a little more of a stretch. And squaring the shoulders towards the front of the room or front of the mat. And if it's in your body, you can always reach the left foot. Left foot, don't reach the left foot back. Reach the right arm back as well. So we want what they call Barbie feet. All right, 
One more round of breath. And then gently release, drop the back leg. We're gonna come into our tabletop. Shift your weight forward, come down onto the earth. All right, so let's find that baby cobra once again. Lifting up one foot at a time, reaching the foot away and placing it back down on the earth. So we lengthen the legs, give a little room here in the lower back. You decide how you want your feet to be. Looking down at the earth, shoulders roll back and down the spine, lift the heart, tuck the elbows by the side. Find your breath. Tops of the feet continue pushing down towards the earth. I'm gonna send everybody a, a meme about finding your breath. It's pretty funny. <laughs> funny things yoga teachers say. Find your breath. All right, again, if you want, hands can come up off the earth. Maybe you reach the arms forward. Reach nice and long, reach, reach, reach. Tops of the feet still push down, point the toes. If your arms are long. Soften the shoulders and exhale to release. Bending the knees, windshield wiping the feet from side to side. I don't know if I said this one. What I have is enough. All right, let's make our way back into our tabletop. Find your blocks again if you need them to bring the earth up closer towards you. Left foot steps through between the hands. Walking yourself back and activating the left foot. So we don't want to uh, lock out the left knee either. We want to still keep a micro bend in the knee. And if you need to lengthen the spine, hinge from the hips, pull towards that left leg. Roll the left hip back, right hip forward. So again, that option, you can stay here if you wish. Or maybe a uh, right hand comes down to a block or the earth. Keep the hips square towards the front of the mat. Left arm reaches up towards the sky. A big stretch. Reason why we call it slow burn, right? <laughs> One more round of breath here. And then gently lowering the left hand back down towards the earth or the block. And slowly walking your blocks forward once again into that low lunge. All right, we're gonna come into this side a little different because I think it was difficult the other way I did it. So if you want, you stay in your low lunge, maybe hands come to the thigh, push into the thigh. So if you're gonna lift the back leg, let's keep the hands on either blocks or the earth to begin. Bending the right leg, activating the right foot, and then slowly coming up, reaching the right hand back. Hoo hoo! Keeping the Barbie feet. So my daughter's always walked on her toes ever since she started walking and she's 10. Like when she's in shoes, she doesn't walk on her toes, but around the house she does. So today she's talking about how she has Barbie feet. <laughs> All right, so listen to this side. This side might be different from the last. Maybe that left hand reaches back. Not gonna happen for me. Square the hips towards the front of the mat.
Thank goodness for blocks. <laughs> All right, one more round of breath here. And then gently release that back leg if it's up. Guess what, we're coming into tabletop. One more time, coming down onto the earth. Go nice and slow, take your time. All right, so same thing as before. Legs extend long. Place the feet down on the earth wherever it feels comfortable. Keep the tops of the feet pushing down. Lifting the heart. Find whatever variation you want to on this side. So the arms reaching forward, if that's starting to feel like a little bit too much, you can always bring the arms back behind you, kind of like when we come into locust pose. We're keeping the feet down in this one because we're holding a little longer. I'm shaking. <laughs> Gently lower down to the earth. Bend the knees, winch, a wiper the feet. Who I am and what I do is enough. Who I am and what I do is enough. All right, let's release the feet. Come back into your tabletop pose and back again into child's pose. Whichever variation feels the best for you. Taking deep inhales and long, slow exhale. All right, so for our twist today, we're gonna to come into, um, actually let's come into a child's pose variation of thread the needle. It's not really a twist, more for the shoulders. That's okay though. All right, so we're still gonna sit our hips back into child's pose. We're gonna walk our hands up so that we have a little bit of space um, underneath the chest. And then bringing the right arm out to the side, scoop the right arm under, and then gently come down. So if you need to, you can always find a block or maybe your other hand stack this to come underneath your forehead. Forehead can come down um, to the earth, sorry, or you can turn your head to the side if that feels better for you. Slowing down your breath. All right, then bringing that left hand kind of close to underneath the left shoulder, push into the shoulder or nope, into the hand to unravel the right hand. So other side, arms are out long enough so that you have space. Left arm reaches out towards the side and scoops under. I am enough, I do enough, I have enough. 
who I am and what I do is enough. All right, let's draw that right hand closer, push in the right hand, unravel. And we're gonna come on to our back. So if you have um, something nearby, a block, a pillow, a folded blanket, something to come underneath your sacrum, um, that would be great. Probably should have mentioned that before class, I apologize. But anything they have nearby, if you don't have anything nearby, then um, you will come into constructive rest instead. So what we're gonna do is supported bridge. So our supported bridge, our feet are on the earth, uh, about hip distance apart, knees are bent. Push the feet into the earth, lift the hips, slide your prop underneath. So it's not in the low back, it's just a little closer to the feet. Okay, and then up to you, what you wanna do here, arms can be out to the side, maybe T-shape, cactus shape, or maybe up above you. And then legs, either knees together, feet apart, or legs can come out long. Play around with the different variations. Sorry, I mentioned constructive rest. Constructive rest is just come out wide, knees come together your hips are on the floor, it's without a prop. All right, noticing the sensation of your breath. Our sacral chakra is about fluidity. Can you make your breath fluid? Notice if maybe it catches somewhere. And how can you soften and allow the breath to be fluid? Sometimes it means just slowing down and noticing and concentrating. So we're gonna be in our um, supported bridge for a couple more minutes, but know that if you need to make adjustments or move around a little bit, you certainly can. you are here, I invite you to let go. Maybe you release something from a relationship. Maybe you release something in relation to creativity, for example, a writer's walk. Having a balanced sacral chakra means being able to go with the flow of life. Being able to nurture yourself and others. Being able to experience pleasure and having healthy boundaries. Oh, is there something you need to release?
All right, so you decide how long you would like to stay in this um, shape on the earth. When you're ready to come out, bringing both feet to the earth, knees are bent, feet are hip distance apart. Pushing your feet into the earth, gently lift your hips and remove the prop from under you. Bringing your hips back down to the earth and then wait just a few rounds of breath before making any movement. And then coming into Shavasana or any final resting shape that feels right for you. Taking deep inhales in through your nose and long, slow exhales out. So again, the element associated with the sacral chakra is water. And water pervades your body. See if you can presence yourself to the inner currents that usually flow far below the overarching bridge of your consciousness. First, notice your circulation. Can you feel your pulse in any particular area? Can you notice the fluid in your body and around your brain? Spinal cord. Your nerves, or imagine them. <laughs> this fluid in your body has its own tide that is palpable in every tissue of the body, moving through you like another kind of breath. Can you feel these waves coasting in and out? Are there any small shifts you could make to allow the waves in you to flow a little more smoothly? Imagine the waves cascading over your organs your muscles, your bones. Perhaps noticing the watery quality of your feelings and thoughts, your needs and desires. You might watch the fluctuations of these tides. Perhaps a desire to change position rolls in and then out. Perhaps the beginnings of hunger or tiredness roll in, then out. A plan for the future rolls in 
then out. Notice what rolls in and what rolls out. Allowing your breath to roll in and to roll out. Slowly bringing your awareness back into the room. Noticing the sensation of the earth beneath you. Perhaps you make small movements in your fingers and toes. Maybe those small movements become bigger movements. And whenever you are ready, rolling over to one side. And then slowly making your way up to seated. And once you get there, lowering or closing your eyes. All right, taking deep inhales. A long, slow exhale. And maybe repeating to yourself, I am enough. The light in me sees and honors the light in each and every one of you. That light is a place of peace, love, kindness, and compassion. When you are in that place in you and I am in that place in me, there is no difference and no distance between us. Together, we are the same. We are enough and we are one. Have a beautiful evening.